Hello and good evening, good morning to everyone. Uh, I'm very delighted today to introduce Gracia Lopez Anguita. Gracia is a lecturer in the Department of Arabic and Islamic Studies at the University of Seville. She graduated in Arabic Philology from the University of Granada and subsequently joined the University of Seville as a pre-doctoral fellow, receiving her PhD in 2014 with a thesis on the treaties Uqlat al-Mustafiz by the Andalusian mystic Ibn Arabi, for which she was awarded the PhD dissertation prize by the University of Seville. She focuses her scientific activity and publications on the thought of this master and his school, including the collective works Historia del Sufismo in el Andalus and Ibn Arabi Isi Epsu Epoca. Her recent research days include Alame Tabasabai University in Tehran in 2018 and the Ecole Pratique des Hautes Études in Paris in 2021, to which she returned as a visiting professor in 2022. She's currently part of the team of a research project of the University of Salamanca, financed by the Ministry of Science and Innovation of Spain and FEDER, the European Regional Development Fund, which focuses on gender and holiness, religious experience and social role through the lives of women saints in northern Morocco. Today, Grathia will be speaking on divine writing and the feminine in Ibn Arabi. Grathia, please unmute yourself. And over to you, Gracia. Thank you so much, Cecilia, for, for the presentation and for welcoming me to this amazing series of talks. Thank you very much to, to the society, which in so many occasions has provided me the opportunity of um, sharing my, my work and learning so much from, from all of you. Uh, many thanks to Lucy, Dee, uh, David, and, and Martin for hosting these, these talks and, and the, the organization, so extraordinary, and, and for, the, for their kindness. Um, as you know, in, in Islamic tradition and, and also in Jewish tradition, um, God's creation through his uh, spoken word or, or written word has provided a major topic in, in both mysticism. Uh, as Ibn Arabi says, uh, God is talking incessantly. He talks in order to be known, and he formulated this saying in the Quran, no fresh message of advice comes to them from their Lord, but they listen to it as in a jest. So it, it is very important, the written word in the Quran, but also the, the spoken, the oral transmission of, of uh, the message and the, the listen to it. Uh, also, he says in Oklat al Mustafis, the cosmos in its totality is rational, alive, and express itself. It's a speaking being, not it, and it expresses itself in a rational way, in an understandable way. Um, so we are listeners uh, of God's speech, but we are also words of this speech because as beings of the cosmos, we also const constitute words, uh, words and names of God according to Ibn Arabi's doctrine. Um, he says that the, the origin of the love that God has for us is to be found in the audition and not in the vision by virtue of his word, be, kun, addressed to us while we were in the prime matter of the dark cloud. The dark cloud, the ama, is one of the, um, the concepts uh, employed by, by Ibn Arabi to mean the, the barzakh or the space between the absence of uh, existence and their real or actual existence, uh, ujud. So in that potential realm of existence um, is to be found the prime matter or the ayam sabita, the fixed entities. Um, so while we were 
and before our actual existence in that cloud, he showed, God showed his love for us, talking to us, saying us be. Uh, in the book of Mim, Wow, and Noon, a, a, a book that deals on the, the, the esoterical meaning of these three uh, letters from the Arabic alphabet, uh, Ibn Arabi says that the Kalam writes in the, in the tablet of the ear of his listener. So even when, when uh, we're talking about the writing of the Kalam, on the, the table, the guarded table or tablet, the sound and the oral communication is also very, very important. Uh, Ibn Arabi says that when in his uh, night journey uh, from, from the earth to heavens and, and hells uh, made by, by Muhammad, he reached the level where he could listen the noise of the columns writing on the tables. So, so this is an interesting topic, I, I think, the, the importance of audition, sound, and we uh, uh, as listeners receive also this, not, not only as readers of his uh, revelation, but also as, listen, as listeners, we receive his, um, his revelation. Um, even Arabi often refer, uh, refers to the dynamics of creation and the events that take place in, in it as the result of, uh, of the writing of the pen on the, on the tablet, the qalam and the lawah. Both elements appear in the, in the Quran. Um, the first of, of them, the qalam, um, has an, an, only one occurrence in the Quran. It's quite ambiguous. It's in... Uh, 20, um, sorry, 68, one, uh, and it says the ayah, noon, by the pen and, and the, that which they write. Uh, but the tablet on, on its part uh, seems from the, the first uh, Quranic commentaries and the first uh, philosophical developments uh, seem to, to identify uh, uh, itself or herself, because it's a feminine element in even Arabic cosmology, with the universal soul um, or the um, matrix of the revelation, also called in the Quran the, the mother of the book. No? Um, the pen or first intellect in philosophical terms, uh, it's a, an angel. It was created from, from one of the angels in rapture by, by love who uh, used to turn around, uh, around God. And uh, he was given to, to have uh, self-consciousness and consciousness of everything in, in creation. So that, that first angel, angel that could have uh, knowledge or consciousness became the, that pen or first intellect. The table, the universal soul, uh, was created from uh, the pen, like, like uh, Eve was created from Adam, no? from a rib of Adam. So, so uh, in, in this sense, it, they, they both share this feminine quality that being of being created from man. Uh, this, um, uh, tablet or, or table also sometimes was identified with the book of deeds that every human being has when they they, they die and and they they, they will be uh, confronted uh, to the day of, of resurrection but um, in, in even Arabic um, cosmology this has more to do with this universal soul or the place um, where the pen writes and let show and let renders manifests everything that it's hidden he keeps hidden in his knowledge so um it is very well, very clear for you in Arabic that the, the pen has a masculine and active uh, role and the the table the tablet is uh, has a feminine one um 
following the divine dictation, the Kalam writes on the tablet, which manifests all the, that is synthetic in the in, in hidden in the Kalam. So the the um, the table is necessary, has to be uh, dark to let the the letters that the column writes on it, which are made of light, uh, so they they can be seen, they can be manifest because of the fact that she is dark and the column is luminous, it's made of light. And he says that uh, the um, tablet plays towards the intellect, the role of Eve towards Adam. It's also uh, said in Oklata Mustafis, between the column and the, and the table, there is a suprasensory marriage. The line, the written line deposited on the table is like the sperm ejaculated and deposited in the woman's womb. The meanings deposited in the celestial letters manifested in the writing are like the spirits of the children deposited within their bodies. The table, so is the, the place of our tablet, sorry, is the place of receptivity, but also manifestation and differentiation, which is an aspect very important and very also very necessary. To, for creation to take place. Uh, in chapter two from Futuhat al Makiya, a chapter that deals on, on science of letters, it is said that uh, the differentiation in divine speech corresponds to feminine. Uh, when the Quran says, Dalik al Kitab in Surat al Baqarah in the first ayah, the Alif Lam Mim, Dalik al Kitab, uh, it says that that Dalik uh, it, it is masculine because it is referring to the book in its aspects of comprehensive revelation, synthetic uh, and concentrated no? uh, revelation, the book. Uh, otherwise, if it, if it would have said, Tilka, Tilka Ayat, or, or something like that, it would have referred to the feminine aspect of revelation, which is its differentiation. It's, uh, as, he, as he calls it, Faslul Khitab, the detail uh, of the discourse or the, um, the uh, differentiation of the, of the discourse, of the divine speech. So uh, this, uh, this aspect of uh, being comprehensive and synthetic and, and being uh, detailed and, and manifested, uh, it was developed by Ibn Arabi in Kitab al-Jama, Wat Tafriq, in, in which uh, deals about this distinction between feminine and masculine and the different kinds of um, knowledge and revelation. Because when we say, uh, say when we read in Ibn Arabi's works, that the qalam and the noon, which is the noon, the letter noon, um, alludes to, to the ink, the place where the ink is. Uh, it talks about its, its meaning. Its meaning is uh, not only revelation, but in, generally speaking, the, the science of God. So the, the science kept in the ink or in the pen, uh, Cannot be known, cannot cannot be developed in the in the creation uh, because it needs a surface to be uh, written on it no? to be to become uh, manifest and evident. Uh, the idea of of marriage of marital union that we have seen um, between masculine and, and feminine is extrapolated by by Ibn Arabi to any aspect of reality, uh, such as writing, for example. Ibn Arabi uh, says that uh, the, the sticking of letters to each other is called writing. Copulation is writing. The whole world is a writing because it is arranged in strata, in ranks, united to each other, and the females in all situation, situa situations generate something, procreate. Um, 
So this is to be found in, in Futu Hat. Uh, also, he says in, in, in the same work in Futu Hat, then when a dialogue takes place, the sender is the father and the receiver is the mother. The speech or the discourse is the marriage. So we will, we will find in a recurrent way the triplicity, uh, a principle of, of triplicity in the universe related to feminine, masculine, and the third thing created from that union, the child from that union. Uh, but the masculine feminine active receptive relation that we have seen is not immutable, but relative. Since uh, the column uh, is passive regarding God, no? with respect to God, and the tablet, the tablet is active with respect uh, to what is below it. So we have that every, almost every uh, element in creation is at both active and, and passive and masculine and, and feminine, depending on which level of existence it is related to. Um, uh, this dynamics works in, in, in the different levels of creation. Um, and also we have, uh, uh, regarding the doctrine of Kalam and, and, and Lau, that there is not only one Kalam and one Lau, one pen and, and one tablet, but uh, many reaching the number, he says, of 360, which are the rates of a circle, three, 360. And he says that their, their arrangement is subordinate to the supreme Kalam and the guarded tablets. So we find a, a number of tablets like in a, in a fractal way, one uh, below the other one, and also that one pen below the supreme pen and another below it. Um, and, and even Arabi says that uh, this is so um, because the things written in the guarded tablet does not change because uh, uh, Allah's words doesn't change, don't change, sorry. Um, that is why it is guarded or, or preserved, because with re regard to the cancellation of what is written, God does, uh, um, sorry, God, God does not erase what he has written on it. Unlike what happens with these secondary columns and secondary tablets. So, so here we have the, the combination of two Quranic ayahs, um, some contradictory in a way, you know, because one of it says that uh, God doesn't change his words, but in, in other ayah in Quran 13, 39, it is said that Allah effaces what he will and establish or confirms what he will. And with him is the mother of the book. So in the guarded tablet, we have the eternal revelation that doesn't change the immutable revelation. While in the secondary tablets and column, we find the things erased and rewritten uh, by God. Um, moreover, it is not uncommon to find an inversion of male and female uh, values in, in even in even Arabic cosmos. Thus, uh, he shows also um, uh, basing himself in a Quranic allusion um, in the verse uh, seven uh, fifty four uh, that says he makes the night cover the day. Tarasha, the verb is Tarasha. Uh, he says that the night is the father because it is he who covers in a sexual way, um, in a sense, the day. So the day being the mother. However, in another passage uh, from the Quran in 2261, we read that Allah makes the night enter the day and makes the day enter the night, reversing the masculinity and, and the femininity assigned to each one leading even Arabi to assert 
that the night and the day are fathers and mothers at the same time, and that if a new being manifests itself during the night, we would say that the night is a mother. And when this new uh, being manifests itself during the day, would the day be its mother? So we, we've seen so, so, so far the, um, the double direction of active, act, active role and passive role, but also the um, simultaneity of the masculine and feminine role in, in the beings of the, of the cosmos. Uh, the doctrine of the Hadras, the, the levels of divine presence, uh, developed in particular by Ibn Arabi's disciple Konabi, who died on his most um, and well-known uh, disciple and also his, his uh, son, um, who died in uh, 1274. Uh, this doctrine of the five hadras also suggests an inter interchangeability of the feminine and masculine. Uh, these five that descend uh, are determinations of the divine ipsaity, being the, the first one, the uh, level of the that, of the essence. The second one, the, the level of the individuations of spirits, then the individuations of souls, the world of imagination and the sensitive world, the Alam Shahada. And uh, Konavi say, uh, says that these, um, these, uh, these levels, the relation among them reproduces um, the uh, dynamics creator, creature, active, passive relation. And, and, and he says that the union of two hadras produces or it's, uh, bring forth no? the, um, I, I, I know the the next uh, the next hadra and they both are uh, married the, the, between them so uh, so it is a, a, um, a scheme that is has a, a repetition in in every every hadra and every hadra is married to the next one and produces a child, which is the next Hadra, which at the same time is married to the, to the other one and reproduces the next level. Um, so uh, again, Konabi, following his master, says that every Hadra is passive in relation to the one above it, but active in relation to the one below it. Um, but also every Hadra, is a reflection and a mirror of the upper hadra, of the upper level. So um, everything um, in, the, in the sensitive uh, world is a reflection of the spiritual world. No? We have this, this very important idea of the mirror uh, of God in the creation. Um, uh, the relation of, of uh, between man and woman is uh, likewise specular. It's like a mirror, uh, because in the woman, uh, and this this idea is uh, developed in Fusus and Hikam, uh, man contemplates himself in the woman and loves her, but also loves himself in that mirror image. Image. On the other hand, the love that the woman professes to the man is a love towards her place of origin. The idea of love as the longing of the beings for their origins or the longing or nostalgia of the whole for its parts or the parts for its whole, whole is explained in a, in a very famous fragment in Fusosar Hikam, the, where, where even Arabi explains the hadith of the three things loved by Prophet Mohammed, um, but we also find a, a similar idea in chapter 178 from Fruit of Heart, which deals about love. And it says that when the human soul, so in, in this time he's, he's talking about 
not the um, macrocosmic soul, the nafas kulia, nafas kulia, but the, the the human soul. And he says that the the human soul, which is a portion taken from the universal soul, um, becomes aware of the causes that God has created above above her to give her existence. She she because it is her, well nafs the word nafs has a double gender in, in Arabic but most of the time is employed in feminine. So uh, she develops a, a love towards those causes those secondary causes, and finally toward God. So we have the same idea here than in Fusus al Hikam that. Uh, you finally develop uh, or feel love from uh, to your to your place of origin or the to the cause of your existence. Um, regarding the um, the beginning of the the gender differentiation in the cosmos, Ibn Arabi tells us that the feminine and the masculine, which are united, ishtama. In, in Hakika, in the transcendental reality, they are one, but order in the circle of creation have differentiated their ranks, Marathi, because of a difference in Rakika. And the, the, this uh, Rakai, um, which means um, subtle bones or or traits when if we are writing that uh, link all of the beings in the um, in the cosmos in creation uh, has the um, the role of, of or the function of create differentiation uh, in the in the unity because the unity underlies um, all of the, the multiplicity of the cosmos, but, it, but at the same time, this multiplicity and differentiation is necessary to, uh, to the creation to become uh, known and, and un understood. No? Without differentiation, there are no understanding and no manifestation and no creation. So this raqiqa, there is one of these bones has the, the function of differentiate feminine and masculine. And that is one of the first, uh, if, if we imagine a, a tree upside down, the first two branches caused by this raqiqa is the, the distinction between feminine and masculine. No? And from the, that um, very first differentiation, the other uh, elements become, become differentiated in the universe. Um, so um, everything he says, uh, talking about when he talks about the, the this raqaiq, these subtle bones, he says that everything in creation is continuous or intertwined. So even if we see elements which are separated uh, from each other and differentiated, all of them are united, more passive, no Con continuous. And, and intertwined. So there is no separation between the elements of the universe and no void. Uh, as both the raqaiq and the haqaiq, the truth, the, the universal realities, links are uh, in twin and become one within the universal human being, the insan al uh, the, the perfect human being. Uh, in one of his treatises uh, devoted to the science of letters, the Kitab al yang also called the Book of the, um, the Hawiya, or the Divine Ipsaiti, uh, Ibn Arabi uh, enters the, the domain of the divine essence and expresses in terms of pronouns the relation between the Ipsaiti, represented by the pronoun Hua, he, and, and represented also by the letter Ha, and the Aines, represented in this book by the letter Ya, because the, the pronoun I, the, the suffix uh, I, Ya, uh, when we say uh, Kitabi, my, my book, or the example that he 
gives is the expression in nani very i certainly i is ya in the by the end of the word um it's an, an allusion to, to the to the first uh, pronoun to me i so uh, even i in this book which is uh, very intricate because it deals with questions of grammar Arabic grammar and metaphysics. Uh, he uh, shows or suggests a, a dialogue between uh, the the pronoun uh, ya from the ines and the ha, the letter ha, uh, or pronoun hua of the uh, huia of the hines, no, the his the ipseiti. Uh, as a result of, of self-contemplation, because once again, um, uh, the world, the cosmos is a mirror and, and when God looks at the, at, at the cosmos, he's looking at himself. So when he talks, when he uh, uh, sends a revelation or says something, he's talking to himself in a way. So this self or this dialogue with, with uh, himself, in this dialogue, the, the Hua has, um, the Ipseiti has at, this, at the same time a double uh, way of expression, which is feminine, is Heia. So we find why, why does this Heia, she, come from, from the fact that the word that, essence, in Arabic is feminine, the gender is feminine. So uh, Ibn Arabi says that uh, that is why in the, in the essence of God, we find the huwiya, uh, but the heya also, because the essence is a feminine word. And Nevertheless, uh, according to Arabic grammar and according to, to this treatise of Ibn Arabi, the hua and the hiya, both of them are pronouns of the absent. Not like you, I, but the third person is the absent person. So it has to do with, you know, with, with the transcendence of, of God. Uh, both she and she this designates the third person um so the the ya uh, the the presence of that third letter is uh what renders uh, or what moves the uh, transcendence of god to his uh, immanent so he says hua is a husband and heya is a wife while the letter ha, not both of the pronouns be, begin uh, with ha, with the letter ha, is a thing that unites hua and hiya as the means that connects two premises leading to a conclusion. For this one, the syllogism, the syllogism is composed of three elements. The middle term is necessary because he was and nothing was with him. This is an ahadith. He was and nothing was with him. So if God would have wanted to remain without becoming immanent, without a manifestation, no one, we wouldn't exist, nothing would, would exist, and uh, he couldn't uh, manifest himself. So he says that this middle term between Juan Hiya, the letter Ha, is necessary, as the third term in a syllogism is necessary for come to a conclusion, he, uh, Ibn Arabi, um, uses the example of the syllogism, the, the Greek uh, syllogism, many, many times in, in his works. And he says, uh, so, um, hua, as hua has no ujud, uh, heya, as heya has no ujud, ha, as ha, the letter has no ujud. The science found in the ya, inni, of, of his self-consciousness, precedes existence in order to manifest the truth of his names, 
Hence, by virtue of that yang, the ha displaces the hua and the hia, hua hia meets each other in the ha, and their contingent existence occurs. So here there, here there is also a kind of movement, like a, a dance. There is a, a certain movement of from the immobility and immutability of the hua that could have remained forever unknown because he was and nothing was with him. But with the fact that God contemplates itself, that um, action of self-contemplation generate other uh, uh, other movements, and in uh, finally the uh, the existence of the phenomenical world. The huahia dynamics produces a child who is the universal uh, human being. Since the relation between the feminine and the masculine. Uh, produces a third element, it seems more appropriate to speak of a triplicity principle in the, in the universe of, of Yen Arabi than a, 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 a dynamics of a bi, binomial. No? So there are always, a, the three is the number that creates movement. Also in the, in the divine imperative of creation, Kun, Bi, Kaf and Nun, he says, are written together with a hidden nexus, which is the wow of the verb kana, kana yakunu, which in the, in the imperative form kun disappear. Um, and even Arabi relates um, uh, these words, the kun, with the other discussion about the he, hua and hiya uh, that we have seen in the Kitaban Yam. Uh, and he expresses that the wa, uh, sorry, the wow of the kun hidden in the kun is hidden but present in accordance with its copulative nature. The letter wow itself is the, um, the copulative particle in Arabic. Uh, and that the union of these two letters, kaf and nun, have the same meaning as the union of hua and hiya in the ha. Uh, in fact, from the point of view of the gematria, the, the numerical value of the letters, the um, the wow and the and the ha uh, is the same. No, it's uh, six number six. The letter ha and the letter uh, wow. Commenting the the Quranic verse, when we want a thing to be. Our only word is be, and it is. This is Quran 16, 40. He says that the thing, we, when we want a thing, the thing is the hiya, the phenomenal thing created in, in, in the universe. And when we want, the expression when we want, is the hua, the transcendent. And the expression, our only word is, that is the ha, that corresponds to the ha. That is the kun, the intermediate point that, that links the two, the transcendent and the, and the immanent. And then he reproduces this exegesis of this verse in a smaller scale, uh, I'd rather say again as a fractal, when he, say, he says that the kaf, of the word kun is the he, and the nun of the word kun is the she, the heya. So it's like we find these dynamics, hoa, heya, and the link between them in every uh, element of creation and in every uh, um, verse of the Quran. Thus, uh, we see that the relation between the feminine masculine and the third element can be understood as the son of this uh, union or the link of this union itself. And it, uh, this works in, in the same way as we've seen in the revealed text and the Arabic common language. Uh, the mirror of the triad of this triplicity finds its own reflection at all level of, of the universe. Um, so we have, for example, we have so many instances of this, this triplicity 
in, in the works of Ibn Arabi, for example, in Futuhat, we have that the origin of existence, as al ujud is not manifested in existentiation, ijad, except by three essential realities, its subsidy, its self-orientation, and its word. So it is the same idea with other words that we, uh, that the one we found in the Kitab al yah in a more, may, maybe more intricate way. In chapter two, uh, from Fruduhat, this chapter devoted to the science of letters, uh, Ibn Arabi says that the divine presence has three of, of these letters of the Arabic alphabet. For essential realities uh, that are part of it, uh, are the essence that the attribute, sifa, and the bond uh, between the essence and the attribute, rabita. And this link, this third thing, has also a, a lot to do with the idea of receptivity, which he says literally, this link is also kabul, hmm? receptivity. Three, receptivity takes place. Uh, through it, the attribute, is connected with the one who is qualified by it and with that with which is actually connected. For example, the science, uh, science connects both with he who knows and what is known. And will connects with he who wills and what is willed uh, and so on. So, um, this this were the, the ideas that I wanted to, to, to share with you, the idea of receptivity uh, linked with the principle of triplicity and also the absence of uh, an immutable scheme of things in, in creation. So we cannot tell this uh, thing is feminine, this thing is uh, passive or receptive, and this other thing is active, masculine, because they, they all of the things are, are both of them, and it depends. It is also uh, dynamic. No, it's not a stable thing that depends on on which with which element we are getting related to. Thank you very much.